Can you briefly explain the tenets of Reformed theology? And does Reformed theology continue to reform? Well, I think the place where it begins, and more can be added to this, but I think it does begin to define Reformed theology with the five solas of the Reformation. Sola Scriptura, Sola Gratia, Sola Fide, Solus Christos, Soli Deo Gloria. And I think that that was a minimalist um, statement of the gospel, that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, for the glory of God alone, based upon the teaching of Scripture alone. And so the Reformation, Reformed theology, obviously coming out of the Reformation, was first and foremost a recovery of the authority of Scripture, that it is not Scripture and the church, not Scripture and tradition, not Scripture and the Pope, but it is Scripture alone. And then the, the, the next three solas define really who is in the kingdom of God and who is not in the kingdom of God, who is going to heaven and who's not going to heaven. And salvation is by grace alone, not grace and um, anything that would have been added by the Roman Catholic Church, whether that be um, being born in the church, married in the church, whether that be indulgences, whether that be prayers to saints, whether it be treasury of merit, uh, whether that be um, even uh, last rites, wh whatever, that it is solely by what God and God alone has done through His Son uh, is the merit of salvation, and it is received exclusively by faith alone, not faith and water baptism, not faith and church membership, not faith and good works. It, it is by faith alone, and that faith is a repentant faith that recognizes the Lordship of Christ and submits the life unto Christ. And then it is in Christ alone. It's not in Christ and the church, not in Christ and any saints. It is in Christ alone. Only that is for the glory of God. Any departure from that is, as Stephen said in his first message, is really a damnable message. And so the Reformation was really all about a recovery of that gospel and how sinful man can find acceptance with holy God. It was further specified by what we would call the five points of Calvinism or the five doctrines of grace, which is looking at it from another angle, what God has done to save sinners, that man is wretched and totally depraved, unable to save himself nor commend himself to God, even unable to believe, being dead in trespasses and sin, that God the Father chose His elect before time, God the Son died for these elect upon the cross, and God the Holy Spirit brings conviction of sin and regenerates those that are spiritually dead in trespasses and sin. So it's a Trinitarian work, as Stephen brought out this morning. And then finally, it, it, it is a work, it is a lasting work that endures throughout time and eternity and one can never fall away from that grace. Now, other things can be added to that, and R.C.'s book, What is Reformed Theology, adds some other specifics and nuances to that, but at its, at its base entry level, I, I, I think Reformed Theology falls within those confines, and you can also add the doctrine of providence that the Reformers saw that God was sovereign over not only salvation, but over the building of the church, over the affairs of this world, and administrates His own eternal decree by bringing to pass whatsoever He foreordained. So it goes down to the very events and circumstances of, of life. And so it, it's a, the question is simple, and we could have a whole series of conferences on just answering what that is. There was some diversity as, as you build out, but at the very epicenter of that, um, those five solas and those five 
doctrines of grace, I think, form the infrastructure. Um, and again, that going back to eternity past and even an intertrinitarian agreement before time began in the carrying out of all of this. So, I, I'll just hop in to begin that. Sorry for the long answer, but it's a great answer. <laughs> If I humbly say so myself, because it is the truth, and we need to shout that from the housetops.